Okay, so let's, uh, let me grab my pen and let me welcome you to chapter five. Um, chapter five has a series of learning objectives. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on objective one uh, today. We're gonna be doing objectives two and three together. And then when I see you next week, uh, believe it or not, we'll be able to finish uh, chapter five within that week's time, no problem. So today's focus is understanding merchandising and inventory. So first of all, what do we mean by merchandising? Um, well, this is simply, simply put, it's retail and retail related. And you've all been to retail stores. You've all shopped, right? Um, some of you are probably very excited about shopping. Others are reluctant shoppers, but need to go shopping for various things. Well, it's a very interesting business and industry to sort of understand, okay? Um, it all starts basically with uh, the manufacturing industry. They're the ones who actually create, design, and make products that you and I buy at all of those stores. And so um, from there, oftentimes they are either sold to a wholesaler, which you see here, um, and then the wholesaler sells them to retailers. But we live in an age where um, thanks to companies like Walmart and others who are very much expanded uh, greatly, um, those retailers have direct relationships with merchandisers. And so wholesalers are not <clears throat> really part of the uh, part of the scheme anymore, you know, of things. Um, Walmart, for example, deals directly with merchant, with uh, manufacturers for their merchandise and what they sell. Uh, and Walmart set that standard back in the 80s. And of course, it's now the standard. It was new back then, uh, but it's certainly the way business is done today. No problem. Um, all the other companies sort of follow this suit. Uh, they deal directly with, with uh, manufacturers. So how it looks is that <clears throat> when we talk about merchandising, we're really talking about goods, okay? We're talking about goods, physical products. Now, up until this chapter, all of the course material has been with service companies, right? Remember services providing a service, right? Doing work for somebody in exchange for payment, right? That revenue. Um, <clears throat> this is the first chapter that really deals with companies that specialize in selling goods. We call the, that merchandise. We call that inventory. So all of these terms are somewhat interchangeable and they certainly are meaning very similar things when we talk about them. So a physical product is really all that Walmart does. Okay, when you walk into Walmart, all you see is products upon products upon products all through the very large space that they have, right? So they specialize in merchandising. That's their purpose. Their purpose is to sell their inventory, okay, to sell the goods that they've purchased. And I think that's important. Before you and I, remember you and I are the consumer, right? So we're walking in and uh, here we are here looking a little bit thin, but maybe that's a New Year's resolution. Um, here we are as a consumer where you and I go shopping are what we consider retails. Retails can be the the regular brick and mortar stores, or they can be sellers of goods online, like Amazon sells goods online. Um, but anyway, that's who we deal with. That's who we deal with. Uh, you and I pay a particular price for the goods, right? When we look at a, at a product, it has a price on it. It already has a price. Um, 
That price is what we pay. That price is revenue to the retailer. It's revenue to the retailer. The prices that you and I pay, price of the retailer. But the retailer has costs because the retailer has to buy the merchandise and put it in the store before the consumer can walk in the store and buy the merchandise. So all merchandising companies have to buy their goods before they sell their goods. I don't know why they're called retailers. They should be called resellers because they resell <laughs> stuff. Right? They buy the goods from manufacturers, put it on the shelf, mark up the price. You and I walk in, we buy it from them. Okay, so that's important to know. That relationship is going to come uh, on the income statement. It's going to show up quite uh, clearly on the income statement, this particular relationship. Okay. I don't know if you, um, uh, if you're familiar, has anyone here worked in retail before? Has anyone worked in retail? Yeah. Okay. So this all sounds pretty familiar to you. Um, and I have a chat indicating that Chris also works in retail. So this particular setup makes perfect sense, right? You all have been through this and you all know that inventory for a merchandising company, right? Are the goods that they pay for and they resell it to the customer. So this makes perfect sense. But if you've only just been a customer and you don't know that business, there's a lot to that business. You're walking into a store that already had to buy the stuff from a manufacturer. So they've already had costs that were involved. And the prices that you pay have to basically give the retailer, cover the cost of that retailer and give the retailer a profit. Has to cover all their other costs as well, as you'll see. So this relationship is extremely important to sort of understand. You and I live it every day when we go shopping. We're going to look at it from the financial perspective. Because retail stores sell goods, which are physical products, their revenue account has a specific name, sales or sales revenue. But when you see the word sales or sales revenue on an income statement, that business is selling goods. Okay. Versus what we saw from learning from back in 101, where we were dealing with Sarah Corporation, which was giving tours. And its revenue account was simply called service revenue. Well, because they just give tours. They're just doing work for people, taking them on tours. Uh, merchandising companies, retailers uh, have sales revenue. That's their main revenue account. So how it looks on their income statement is different than a service business. You remember when we looked at um, Sierra Corporation, we had service revenue minus expenses gives us net income. That was easy. Well, it's almost as easy, but slightly different for a merchandising company. First of all, their, re their revenue account is called sales revenue. Sales revenue to a company is the money it collects from the customer, right? So you and I walk into a store and we buy a, you know, uh, a dollar, you know, candy bar. I'll just, I, don't know, I think I'm having a sugar craving. Uh, a dollar candy bar. Well, that dollar that we have given the store is revenue for the store, okay? So they would mark it in as sales revenue. So the prices that you and I pay as a customer is the revenue to the company. The first thing that they do is they subtract out what it costs them to get the merchandise. So let's go back to my example of going into a retail store and simply buying a candy bar. 
Well, I give them a dollar fifty for their candy bar. The first thing they're going to do is subtract out what it costs them to buy the candy bar and put it in the store before they sold it to me. So that is called the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is an expense account. Okay. Cost of goods sold is an expense account. So this is a new expense account that you're learning. It was brought up earlier in Accounting 101 briefly in a couple of examples, but this is the first expense account that's listed on a retail or merchandising company's income statement. The difference between the sales revenue and the cost of goods sold is something called a gross profit. And simply, the gross profit is, is the difference between what the customers gave the company, less what the company had to pay to provide that good to the customer. Okay. So, you know, I look at the candy bar, let's go to a backpack. <clears throat> you pay $40 for a backpack, that's sales revenue. The first thing they do is subtract the cost of that backpack. Maybe it costs them $15 to buy it from a manufacturer and put it in the store. The gross profit is simply the difference between those two numbers, which in this case for the backpack would be a $25 gross profit. The $40 that the customer paid minus the $15 the company paid. We give them that. From the gross profit, all the other expenses are subtracted out, and that'll give a net income or a loss. So this is very, very important to know. Okay, so I'll put a little star there, although it's a little bit crooked. Um, just to understand that this measurement is super important to know. Again, it's specific to Merchandising, right? Service businesses don't have this, but a merchandising company, any retail company, any company that sells goods will have this. Cost of goods sold is your new expense account. So the cycle for operating a business is different. Service companies have a very simple cycle. They simply sell stuff, either they collect cash or they have a receivable and that receivable turns in the cash. What a service company sells is a service, right? So I'm cutting your hair, uh, I'm plowing the driveway to get the snow out, um, <clears throat> I'm diagnosing a disease or an illness that you have, I'm doing your taxes, I'm giving you legal advice. Uh, <clears throat> all of those are services. Merchandising companies uh, do not uh, focus on selling services. They focus on selling goods. So the first thing they have to do is buy the inventory to put it in the store. Inventory is an asset to a company. So inventory is an asset account. There's another account that you're going to be learning more about in these two chapters. Inventory is a current asset, classified as a current asset, because the whole purpose of the inventory is to sell it quickly. There's no merchandising company that buys a bunch of inventory and wants to keep it on the shelves. The goal of the inventory is to sell it quickly. The inventory is the main way they make revenue. That's their entire purpose. So they sell their inventory. <clears throat> When you and I buy inventory, we're, we're basically paying cash. Even if we use a credit card, it's a cash payment to the merchandiser. Uh, however, business to business transactions are very common. So one business does business with another business. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an accountant, I need new computers. I go to Best Buy, look, I need new computers. Best Buy could sell me that on account. In other words, they could say, okay, we're going to allow you to, to buy this and we're going to send you a bill, right? Uh, that doesn't happen to you and me. 
It only happens with a business to business transaction. So there's accounts receivable that's involved for some merchandising companies that sell to other businesses. Of course, they have to, they'll receive cash. That cash is being used to buy more inventory for sale, blah, blah, blah. So the cycle is different. It's a little bit more complex. There's a few more moving parts. <clears throat> and for those of you that have already worked in retail, this should make perfect sense. But I need you to, for those that don't, step by step. First box here. You know that at the end of it, because you know from chapter four that we have to close the books on a, on a period, an accounting period and start a new accounting period. So the ending inventory that's on the balance sheet for say December 31st of 2020 <clears throat> is the beginning inventory on the balance sheet for January 1st, 2021, <laughs> right? So everything starts with beginning inventory. There's already so much inventory. There's so many goods already in the store. What the company does from there, so that's the starting point, they buy a whole bunch of goods, right? So companies are always buying more inventory to put on their shelves. More and more inventory is coming in every day or every week. And those uh, that's a cost to the company. Now, between the inventory they already have on the shelf and the inventory that they're purchased, all of the inventory is available for sale. So literally one plus two equals three in this case, uh, but I'm actually just showing you boxes. Um, all the inventory is available for sale, okay? And there's a cost to that. There's a certain amount of money that the company had to spend to bring all that inventory in the store. Remember, that's not free. They have to buy it before they sell it to you. Well, only two things can happen to inventory from an accounting perspective. Only two things can happen to inventory. At the end of a period, say a month, a quarter, a year, <clears throat> there's still inventory on the shelf. Well, that's your ending inventory. Whatever is not in the store, we are assuming from accounting purposes, it's sold. Thus, it's part of the cost of it's sold. So say, for example, uh, you started with uh, $100, and I'm just gonna make it simple, $100 worth of inventory <clears throat> at the beginning of the year. And you purchased $900 worth of inventory for your store. That would give you $1,000 worth of inventory in total. That's the $100 of inventory you started with, plus the $900 of inventory you bought. Those two together give you a total available inventory of 1,000. At the end of a period, we count the inventory. Let's say you have <clears throat> um, $200 of inventory still in the store. So if you started with $1,000 of inventory and you only have $200 of inventory left, we have to assume that you sold the rest. So $800 is gonna be the cost of goods sold because it's the difference between the two. Remember, cost of goods sold is an expense account. So you'll see, <clears throat> and I cannot type you'll see cost of goods sold as an expense. And you know, expenses belong on the income statement. So cost of goods sold will be on the income statement as an expense. Inventory is an asset account. It's a current asset account, and it'll be on the balance sheet at the end of that period, okay? So this is understanding the flow of inventory and how companies look at it. <clears throat> Now companies use, uh, they have to keep track of this flow and they use two methods. Um, most companies use something called a perpetual inventory system. Uh, some companies, however, use a periodic system. So what's the difference? Let's take a look. So a perpetual system 
basically is a continuous record of inventory. And this is what most companies use because most companies are computerized already. So in other words, every, inven every piece of inventory is scanned in uh, so they know what their inventory is. And then as customers buy the inventory and it's scanned out, you know that wonderful noise you hear? Is it scanned out? The inventory is affected that way as well. So the record is continually updated as it goes. So you know what you have in stock, what's on hand. You already know. Um, and thus that makes it easier to manage your inventory. Okay. So that's a perpetual system. A periodic system does not have those types of detailed records. So back in the day, this was very common because um, most stores were smaller and didn't, were not computerized. <clears throat> it's uncommon today, but it still exists. Um, and that means that they don't have a computerized perpetual system, which means what? They're gonna have to count. <laughs> they're going to literally physically count what they have in stock <laughs> for inventory um, on a periodic basis. Uh, what periods are used? Well, usually when you're doing a financial statement, you know, uh, the income statement is done monthly, quarterly, annually. So you're probably going to be counting at least then. Um, but basically you count at the end of whatever period you're measuring. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot of work, it's a whole lot of work uh, because you physically have to count the inventory and compare it to your records. Okay, thank God for technology that's done all for us. But even with the technology, guess what? Even those big systems like big companies like Walmart, which are fully computerized, <clears throat> they still have to physically count the inventory at least once a year. And the reason is there's errors on the computer. So for example, if you worked at a retail store and you were doing a physical inventory, they would give you a list of all of the items that you need to count. But on that list is what the computer thinks we have an in inventory. So for example, if I was at CVS, uh, and I was given a list and it says like CVS brand, baby aspirin, chewable, strawberry flavor. And I'm counting one, two, three, four. I see four bottles of CVS brand, baby aspirin, chewable, strawberry flavor. Well, that's my physical count. In other words, that's my periodic count, it's my physical count. However, when I look at the computer records, it says I'm supposed to have five bottles. So in other words, the perpetual system shows I'm supposed to have five bottles, but I counted four. Well, in that case where there's a discrepancy, the physical count basically overrides the computerized system. So I'm gonna update the computerized system and say there's four bottles and not five to correct it. Um, again, we simply, if it's not in stock, we simply cost it out. It's simply part of cost of goods sold. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Good Lord, my throat is getting dry here. Um, so that's basically your introduction here to merchandising operations and inventory. Um, so a merchandising operation is a retail business or a business that sells merchandise, either to customers like you and me or to other businesses. And inventory is an asset that is a very important asset because it has to be tracked. Uh, for retailers, it's so important that they spend all types of money making sure that it's tracked well. Why? Because they sell it for a living. They buy the inventory with one reason in mind, to resell it to you as a customer, okay? So your do it exercise looks at whether these statements are true or false. So let's take a look. Uh, again, your do it exercises, sorry, are really good to review at the end of every chapter, at the end of every learning objective, right? 
So the primary source of revenue for a merchandising company is from performing services. No, it's from selling goods. So that's why this is false. For um, the primary source of revenue is sales revenue, not service revenue. The operating company of a, sorry, the operating cycle of a service company is a little shorter than a merchandising company. Yes, there's simply less steps involved. Merchandisers have to deal with inventory. Service businesses do not. Sales revenue, less, less <clears throat> or subtract, cost of goods sold equals gross profit. That's true. And that's very, that's something you have to know. That's something you have to know. Okay. And then the last thing here, ending inventory <clears throat> plus the cost of good purchase gives you the cost of goods available for sale. No, it's actually the beginning inventory, not the ending inventory, plus all the goods that they bought gives them the total amount for sale. So that is a record of 